Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Local Chat, episode 183. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is a guy in a blue shirt. It's Kyle Bailey. It's me. I do have a blue shirt on. Congratulations, Will. You're not colorblind. Hell yeah. I'm glad I can tell my doctor that. Speaking of doctors, we've got Dr. Ian Gibson here. Um, I just realized that it's episode 183. That means in 17 episodes, roughly four months, we have to redo everything again. How dare Ooh. you? I'm not doing that. You have to rebrand. Oh, we got to rebrand. We, we got to get started get... now. Yeah, might as well. What's, well, okay. So what's our rebrand? What's our new thing? This was like Vaporwave uh, E-Girl. Windows. E-Girl. Yeah. 2000, 2006 Hot Topic. That's what I want. Oh. I want it to be, like, I, want, I want that reaction when people tune in. <laughs> we go to 70s wood retro. Oh, I do Ooh. like that. Like our uh, when we had We're our uh, battle of the best consoles or whatever that no one's ever heard of. A lot of that yeah. feeling. Pina Coladas, Jimmy Buffett, getting high in your parents' basement. <laughs> Sounds like a fun Saturday. These night. are things you could have if you Come on over to my house. Uh, folks, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll totally, um, we'll totally rebrand in 17 episodes. I'm so excited for that. I, I, nothing but elation for that at all. Um, folks, I am going away next week. I am going to the great state of Europe where things are free and the land is beautiful. Uh, Can I cut in re here real quick? So I... Yes. I knew you were going to Italy for months now because uh, you and Karen had some questions for me because we went earlier this year. And it wasn't until about a month ago that I put it together that you were planning to go to Italy in August. Yeah. And I have to say, are you prepared for the heat and no AC? Yeah, I know. I Listen, this if it were up to me, I wouldn't be there in August. Um, okay, am I fair. ready for it? Yes, I think all of the hotels and Airbnbs Karen booked oh. have ACs. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle is, is it actually a good AC? Because that's yeah. the other problem with Europe. Um, yeah. I distinctly remember that. Um, but yes, I am also packing. Uh, and a couple of the places have laundry as well. So I, if I sweat through all that's my good. clothes, that's I can good. just do laundry. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm, I like to travel. I, I'm good at traveling. Um, so I'm like not worried about that. It's traveling with a large amounts of uh, my family, her family, uh, that I'm just like in my head. It's I'm not like, just you guys. You've yeah, got a whole, it's, it's a, whole a whole group, group of whole host of people. And I'm just like, I, I when I travel, by, I love traveling by myself. I like traveling just with Karen. Like when I'm in New York City, it like mentality of just like on the subway off the subway walking walking turn left yeah. uh, like i know to step to the su like when i stop in public step to the side look at like and i'm just waiting for all the moments of people just like stopping taking a picture like blocking people or like not yeah. understanding something at a restaurant so karen has at least done a great thing where she researched everything she put she's put together like a presentation to present to everyone before we go like this <laughs> is what you do <laughs> like like the one thing like you wouldn't think of is when you get a drink at a restaurant or a coffee or something and you're just grabbing it don't go sit down outside with it because that is then invite like that is initiating the I'm at this restaurant now. It is not just like yes. American seating at a restaurant. Um, no. And then like if I, you want good say, gelato, make sure you can't see it before yeah. you get it. Uh, just just real like quick, that. going back to the restaurant thing. Something that we didn't we didn't do this until halfway through the trip. But every pretty much every fucking restaurant in Italy has a name and a label on it. <laughs> So it's like like one of them is like Trattoria and then it's like Restoria. Each of those is a is a type of restaurant and it dictates what service and what you're expected to do, whether it's sit down and eat or sit down and drink. So like a bar is a coffee house. A cafe is sit down alcohol drinks only and maybe small appetizers. Mm. So if you look that up, then your your rule doesn't apply at every single place, but you'll know based off the name of the restaurant if it's a tutorial, if it's a restory, if it's a cafe, what the expected behavior is that I would recommend that because we noticed that halfway through the trip and then we started learning it. But if you know that from the start, it'll help. 
Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll write that down. Um, I had written down a chit chat here, which is, uh, so I, I'm pretty good at packing. I'm pretty good at, 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 at be like, listen, I theoretically could raw dog a flight. I don't want to, but I could oh, do it that's... if I wanted to. Um, like the guy on Karen's flight from Florida, he just sat there and stared ahead the entire time. Um, <laughs> but I, what are your, what are your packing tips? What are your travel tips? What are your, uh, you guys, what, what do you got for me? You're doing, you're doing a carry on, right? Like I, there is zero reason to check luggage unless you have like tools and weapons basically. Yeah. I, I, I think we're doing one checked bag, but it is a, it is a, it is a duffel bag, checked bag, like shoulder bag not a wheelie yeah. or anything like that it is because i have my i have my airport essentials big camera backpack that i bought years ago that i always travel with because it fits right between my legs in the oh. seat it is so perfect yeah. uh and then my other bag is my doctor's bag which is great and i love it and it's tiny and it fits above so like all the excess stuff of like yeah, because I'm a doctor. All the excess stuff of like toiletries and everything, we can just throw in that duffel bag and it can, like, I don't have to worry about like specific, like, things I can't oh, pack in the yeah. toiletries and stuff like that. So, that uh, I, I will just say, uh, yeah, you, you go in. I, I think you, I think you do want a bag with wheels. And the reason why is if you guys are taking the train, especially if you're taking the train to go to your next stop and you're taking all your stuff because you're changing hotels. You don't want to be standing there for 40 minutes or walking around a train station, et cetera, with a duffel bag. You definitely want something with wheels if possible, because there's going to be moments on the trip where you're going to be with your checked bag for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I if this was I, I think if I were bringing um, an actual like huge big checked bag with i yeah. would have want wheels on that but for as, as small as the duffel bag is i'm fine with that plus karen's her like upper carry-on her not personal bag yeah. i've been told is what they are called the carry-on actual carry-on has wheels i carry on um, yeah. and like that's perfect. i call them i say i say you get two <laughs> carry-ons because i just prefer to say that so, but it's not true. so then you could just yeah so then you could just throw the duffel bag on on the carry-on exactly and then yeah and then move it around yeah and then so, wheel it around yeah um, so yes, my we, mine is a little bit more complicated because i have to bring not just clothes and like you know any camera stuff or like laptops but i also have to bring all of my diabetic stuff so if it's an extended no. trip like when i when i went to tokyo i had to bring two months even though i was only going to be there for a month you always bring double what you're supposed to so i had to bring two months worth of like um the tubing that i need for my insulin pump the the insertion sites like that actually go into my stomach um the insulin i actually have a it's a thermos with a little mini ac on top that you can uh -huh. plug into uh like a usb port or whatever and it will keep uh, the insulin cool up to 72 hours so i always have that with me in my backpack and even though i have tsa pre-check every single time they're like what is this um it's annoying but it's just the cost of being diabetic and traveling <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, it's great it, insulin tastes great try it kids um <laughs> and then immediate death um yeah so uh i got i think i sent you a link will actually but i got for like 200 bucks or like 190 bucks a set of three wheeled um yes three three large medium and small uh luggage and the large one i always check just because it has like most of my clothes in it and everything and i know i'm going to ha have enough stuff that i will need to check a bag anyway so i figure why not load it up with stuff and then i have my backpack that i have my big ass backpack and then i have the small luggage thing and i bring both of those onto the plane so i always have my insulin with me i always have at least like two days worth of clothes with me um uh -huh. and then i can put like whatever else in it but i have i and my cpap i have my my cpap machine that i have to bring um so it's it's a lot of stuff that I have to bring, but uh, you know, when I actually, when I came down to Florida, um, the last time they lost my, my carry on or my, they lost my check bag. So I had everything with me that I needed for the two days. It took them to get me my, my checked bag. So I was totally fine, but it's just sucks that you have to yeah. do like, like you have to take those steps in order to be okay as like a normal person. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah. Um, good. I, I like this advice. I will say my sister-in-law's in the chat, and she asked if I got the fan she bought. 
which she showed us and it looks like a pair of headphones but it goes on your neck and it blows air up and i was like you know oh, yeah, I've seen this those. thing is just stupid enough that it's pretty great and i still think i might get that um uh for the flight i forget how long the flight is i think it's at least 100 hours um i'm thinking probably like it's probably like nine on the way over 10 I on think the way it back because it was it was a little bit longer to atlanta i've Where got are you flying to which, which city <laughs> uh to rome good old rome uh that's where uh rome is from i don't know if you know that uh from gladiator from gladiator rome, rome from Gla <laughs> roman reigns is from there i wonder i was trying to wonder if the how long is the olympics when does the olympics stop it's normally like 21 days or something like 20 yeah, days I was wondering yeah. if the tourism would be less in Italy because the Olympics are going on. I feel like it would be more. That's yeah, the other thing that I said. Maybe there's Europe more general. because yeah. there's people I, in Europe. I don't mean to harp on this, but like you don't want to go to Europe in August, not just because of the heat, but that is their tourist season as well. Yeah. yeah. So listen, if there was something I could do about it, <laughs> I would. I didn't play. I know. This I know. Trip. I'm just saying. Uh, I, I at least gave you guys the piece of advice I had, which is we went in. When did we go? I was like March or April or something. And it wasn't it wasn't that busy, but all the major tourist attractions, you you have to book them ahead oh, because yeah. they will sell out immediately. So I know you guys at least took that advice. So so that's good. Yeah, we're going to book them when we're there. So no, I'm kidding. Yeah, we booked them all. Oh, get... Karen actually woke up at six in the morning because the no, it was like two in the morning and then went back to bed because it was the Coliseum tickets are like released a month in advance now and you have to wow. like the next day is the month in oh, advance so you but have you to went, get you up. went through the coliseum website not through a tour group yeah it was th because the i forget why it was like we needed a specific thing that the coliseum uh did i i don't remember why but anyways i think she so, got so, but, them. but the only thing is i i think the only way you get on the arena floor and the underground is through a tour group though yeah i think I, it was some sort of tour group with the like speaker thing oh, that you listen to the person um through them but, okay gotcha because yeah. it was it specifically had to be that way because i think we're going to see the um coliseum on two, two of my family are uh more orthodox jewish so they uh, were going on shabbat so there can't be like electronics like the use of specific electronics oh, yeah. but having the speaker and someone talking through it is fine so it's just like um yeah that worked out that, so. yeah it checks out i talked true listen i asked god i said it was fine it checks out it checks, it checks out. out it checks out it's, it's in the bible yeah the other one um uh finally <laughs> flight the dead sea scrolls <laughs> dead sea scrolls uh <laughs> the live sea scrolls please um uh flight <coughs> entertainment uh other than what's going to be on whatever computer device in front of me uh, if they have good movies, like I still haven't seen Oppenheimer, so I'm really hoping for that. I was just gonna <laughs> say, flight. watch Oppenheimer on the floor. You know, honestly, you should. That movie did not need to be an IMAX at all. <laughs> just just could, watch it on. Like, if I could experience the way the movie, the way Nolan intends. <laughs> honestly, my my number one problem with with plain movies now is that they have that like fucking like bulletproof anti Mac antibacterial screen on it which has like a texture on it so you're never seeing the screen you're seeing it through this like weird textured filter of the <laughs> plastic in front of the screen that's it's the like thing the, that pisses me the off the worst most. kind of film grain ever it's like, yeah it's bad i'm, I'm like i can handle the 720p i can handle the distractions yeah. around me but i can't handle the fucking <laughs> shitty glass they put in front of it nightmare i think my I'm thing to think... is my thing is the the pilot announcements oh. i hate when it, it oh, interrupts yeah. it's like the worst it's the worst, the worst so time you too. can't even hear it because it interrupts your thing and then it doesn't come through the headphones every time so you're just like yeah what, yeah. what did he say and then you gotta talk to the people next to you and be like what we're going down um yeah so uh, there's that i'm gonna bring my mew mini um and play that's, stuff that's on my that. recommendation i was gonna look up um i need a good list of like puzzle games or something or I, I might like pick back up breath of fire 4 um and just keep going through that or something i know would i'm you, gonna find would something would you recommend would you recommend getting the miu mini like is Hell it yeah. is it worth it's it great yeah well okay but wait 
Yours doesn't. Does the Miu Mini have analog sticks? Uh, no, it doesn't. But I, I, so I would I would recommend getting same format. One of those companies, probably Miu, but or an Ambernick, but get the analog sticks because those things, they do play N64 PS1 games. So you might as well get the so, one with analog sticks. The Miu Mini it. Plus doesn't play N64. It does play PS1. So definitely for that, but it doesn't play in 64. Oh, it doesn't play. The one no. I just linked to in the chat is the one that I've had, like, on... It like, should. I've been it's waiting to pull chip. the trigger, but... It's the um, exact same chip. No, because the stuff yeah, I have... See, I, it, I would... I would... I would get the same four factor from me or Ambernick, but I, I would definitely get one with analog sticks. Because, mm. like, like we said, PS1 and N64 games, you're going to want an analog stick with it. Yeah. Hmm. So um, I mean it's up to you. What's I, um I love Retro movie. Retro Game Retro Game Core, right? Yeah, That's Retro Game guy. Core. I would I'll watch his reviews of things. He uh, does a great. shitload of reviews, very comprehensive, and there's a whole bunch of budget options for you at that like forty to sixty dollar price. Yeah. And and okay. you can get you can get GBA style ones now. Uh so you know, plenty of options, whichever one you want to yeah. get. But yeah, they're, been... they're really good devices. And they're cool. The the Mi Mini, they're coming out soon. If you want to hold off, they haven't announced it yet, but they're having like a press conference soon. Um, is the S their SP version? Ambernet came out with theirs, but this will be Ooh, the Game I Boy SP, that and that does have analog yeah. sticks on it. So okay, um, they got wait for there's, that. There's one I kind of want, which is it's it's the horizontal GBA format, but it's basically like fifty percent taller than a GBA, yeah. like a basic Game Boy Advance. And, and so that gives you analog sticks on the bottom and it's like a like a 3.5 inch or like a big hefty square screen in the middle that. of it what is that one and called that, uh retro game Pow Court. kitty he'll tell you okay. yeah, retro yeah game Court. Kitty, that, through his, uh, that was like stuff. 60 or 70 but it's like it has like a honking screen in the middle so mm. it's like i don't know maybe like 60 percent the size of a switch he has great videos on like here's your budget here are all the things within that budget and then like moves up the budget ladder um gotcha. the, the best thing by far about the Mi Mini uh plus and the Mi Mini is the Onion OS is just really great which is the operating yeah. system it, it's just really really good um so I've got mm. that I got, I'm gonna bring the Mi Mini um I thought about bringing the 3DS instead of the Mi Honestly, Mini but I, w I would just pick one or the other I'm, no, because no, it's yeah, one not of those both. things definitely not both yeah I always make the mistake of I bring too much stuff and then I get to maybe 20 percent of it on the trip and so I, I try to I still do that, but I try to limit the hardware. So it's like I'll bring I'll bring one game device and a tablet, but then I'll load them up with way too many games and movies as opposed yeah. to bringing like three or four hardware. Is it that one that I just linked to? Ian? Yeah, I think that's the one, the RGB 30. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I think there's some others clones of those coming out as well. And cool. and don't be afraid to go after cheap clones like I have a cheap clone and it's just as good as the Mew Mini and it was like 30 bucks. So awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so I got that. Um, yeah, so I, I was going back and forth because I wasn't sure which one, but I'll still make it, it would be one of those, the 3DS or the uh, yeah. or the Mew Mini. Uh, then I got my Kindle, and then I'm bringing the Name of the Rose paperback as my book to read um, on the trip. I just, I like, I wanted to pick like an Italian, it's an Italian book. It takes place in Italy. I was like, oh, this will be a fun thing to read while I'm there. Uh, and then I have the Kindle for when I don't want to read it. I can read something else, like, uh, what's that one, Jason? Atomic Habits. I'm like 25% the way through it, and I already yeah. I, Is the first habit how to finish this book? <laughs> yeah, I'm so close. Listen, I finish books. I just read way too many at the same time. Uh, it's a nightmare. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's all I'm bringing. Uh, and it's gonna be fun. And uh, Ian's gonna be hosting local chat. I apologize in advance. Um, for JD Vance and his couch, um, he's gonna be on. He's gonna be you on. You did line him up JD. for me yeah. before you left. I lined him up for you. He's gonna be on. Actually, we're gonna have him and Kamala. It's, it's a JD <laughs> cast. It's it's JD Vance and then JD from Scrubs. It's gonna be crazy. Oh, oh God. <laughs> uh, and you're gonna be doing your uh, what's his friend's name? You're gonna be doing him. Oh, I don't know. That's as far <laughs> as I can go, man. It's been too long. <laughs> I I'm gonna play the dead scrubs. brother. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh, topical scrubs, man. What a 
Uh, has that won an Emmy yet? Okay. Uh, moving on. <laughs> yet. Uh, it's still airing, right? Season 12. <laughs> um, uh. or, yeah, let's move on. Let's get out of here. Let's fly away from the pains of yesteryear and talk about the games we've been playing. Kyle, you haven't been on in a while. Last week, your PSU committed suicide. Um, did. This week, you got a new one. I did. How did that within, go? Within two days. Uh, it was it was fine. I got another Corsair. Um, it, it's exactly what I needed to do. The last one did last me like eight years, so I figured I'd just stick with them. Oh, wow. Um, so I got I got a lot of a lot of good use out of that Corsair PSU. So I went with them again. Seems to be working fine. My computer has not shut down, but it has been determined by Intel that my 13700K is indeed defective uh, because of all the news oh. of their defective chips and everything. So I will have I have to swap what, that out via RMA. So what was the what was the check process? Because I haven't checked my 13900 yet. So the past. I would say four or five months, I've had a series of crashes for generally uh, like no no reasons like they just crash yeah. yeah and there have been there have been a couple um really unnerving instances where i've been like editing a, a video that's i've been under a time crunch and the screen will get um those like blocksy block blocky pixels um uh, and they'll be like yeah are you are fuck. you getting that too <laughs> it's very rare but yeah no yeah. so i started those and i've had one or two crashes yeah i started seeing those more and more often um so what i did was i watched um a gamers nexus uh video and they uh -huh. were talking about like just general instability and i was like this seems pretty fucking unstable to me so i reached out to intel support um i still i keep the boxes for like all my important computer parts just in case i need to uh -huh. rma them so i got the box out i had to put in um the SKU number uh i think i had to tell them like when i bought it and i couldn't remember but luckily micro center keeps all of your receipts so i went yeah. back to like 2022 when i bought it i had the full receipt downloaded as a pdf and i sent everything to them and they basically were like have you done xyz have you uh confirmed these settings on the bios and i said yes and they basically were like okay it's defective and then they give you the option to either do you send it in they confirm it or the confirm that they've received it and then they'll send you one or they will send you one and then you give them your credit card and they'll do a chargeback yeah. kind of thing. And then they'll release Ooh. the chargeback once they receive your CPU. So that's that's what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, it's super, super annoying. But that that exact symptom that you you are seeing is exactly what they confirmed was like part of the instability. So yeah, fucking I, I mean, fucking Intel, man. Like, I, I don't know if I told you guys, but that so I got I got the, the i9 13900 because I was like, fuck it. You know, I do video editing, whatever. Uh, and so I got the i9 and I'm pretty sure I burned my first CPU because they did something with the, the 13900 where they were just like, yeah, we're just going to let it run hot yeah. because that gives you performance. And I'm like, OK, I understand that, you know, you're buying the enthusiast one, but then it's you're relying on the motherboard BIOS to not by default let you run hot. And I burned my first CPU because my motherboard BIOS, and there's a lot of manufacturers doing that, are just by default being like, yeah, fucking run it hot. So yeah. it was going up to like 110C and it burned the CPU and it's fucking stupid. It, like this is just a bad gen between that problem you're talking about and them just like taking all the limits off by default. So people keep just like I knew enough to check the BIOS and pull it back and I had to and then. And then I wasn't able to recover the first one and I got it replaced. I had to pull it back. If you didn't know any of that, you would just by default install it and burn that fucking CPU because it's running too hot. And yep. and honestly, potentially burn your fucking house down because it's running so hot. Like I they really <clears throat> fucked up this gen and I'm mad about it. Some of the some of the voltages that I've been seeing that people are like, oh, yeah, I just always assumed that like 1.4, 1.5 volts was like normal no. and it's like no are you kidding me yeah um, it's just the motherboard defaults at that it's like what the yeah. fuck are you guys doing it's crazy yeah. it's it's ridiculous and they i think they just announced they let go of like fifteen thousand yeah. employees so they're, yeah, they're in not the doing shit well. right now yeah they're yeah if they're gonna you know they're gonna rma it they're gonna give me a brand new cpu yeah i'm gonna take it from them but like yeah. i might not buy intel again for a good long while plus the thing um, is your your new cpu from what i read it does not have a fix 
they don't have a fix for this issue. And they, I don't think they can even tell which CPUs have the issue. They're just going to replace it if you have symptoms. That's it. So, supposedly, there's a microcode change coming in like mid-August, which I don't believe that. I, yeah, I mean, it's it's all up to them. But all that to say that partially, I think, is due why to why I had such a bad experience playing Call of Duty Warzone this week, because mm. a bunch of my friends from college still play it. I have not touched that game in several years. Downloaded it on Steam. Thank God you don't have to use Battle.net anymore. Uh, and within 15 minutes of playing, I had my first hard crash. Like, not just huh. the game, my whole computer crashed. Oh, yeah. And it proceeded to do that for every other match that I tried to get into, either within 30 seconds of joining or just in the loading screen, it would hard crash. So... I don't know if that's system instability or just war zone instability, but that game is a piece of shit and it's terrible. I can't believe it is as popular as it is and they haven't fixed just general instability issues on PC, but I can't play that game. So I had a real bad time trying to. Um, uh, next game was uh, the Elden Ring DLC, Shadow of the Earth Tree. It's great. I played about eight hours of it with my friend. Uh, we, we've been going through it co-op. Um, that game more just has the, the connect connectivity issues still abound. Like you'll just randomly get kicked. It says kicked for inappropriate activity. And then it just, <gasps> you restart and it's like, fine. Very I don't know what that never happened to me before, but like it is happening now with this DLC, but it's few and far between. I'd say we had maybe two, two of those happen within eight hours, which is, you know, annoying, but fine. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, I'm really, really, really enjoying it. I think it's it's great. I love being in that world and just playing that game is a lot of fun. And then uh, the third game I played was actually a recommendation from my friend uh, Manvir, who played it on his PlayStation. But it's Nobody Wants to Die, uh, which I don't know if you guys have heard of it or talked about it before on local chat. A little bit. Yes. But we haven't yeah. talked about it, but heard of it. Wait. Yeah, I I had not heard of it before. And he told me, yeah, it's kind of like a detective game with some time manipulation stuff. And uh, I'm about an hour into it and I really dig it. It's it's really cool. It's sort of like a noir. Uh, past future cyberpunk a little. It's like cyberpunk mixed with like 1940s, 1950s detective style stuff. And um you are like a detective with a sordid past and it's sort of like a one one last job kind of thing that you're doing and uh nobody wants you to actually figure out the murder but you can't help yourself you're just such a good detective and there's some time manipulation stuff where you can go to a crime scene and sort of replay what happened up to a certain point um you got a lot of cool gadgets that you get to use and sort of walk around these bespoke environments and and uh there are hints that the game will give you or you can completely turn them off and just go it alone and try and find all the different hints uh, that you you can to connect everything. And then once you get back to your apartment, you set up basically a um, uh, a futuristic version of like a pin board. We're like connecting mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. and it allows you to connect stuff that doesn't actually work. And you can you can come oh, okay. up with these hypotheses and then you can like destroy the hypothesis and come up with a new one. So there are like multiple different ways you can solve a case. Um, I think the first one, it kind of holds your hand because it's it's still training you on how to do everything. But uh, really interesting like techniques uh, that and and really interesting gameplay. I'm, I'm 80 minutes into it right now and it's pretty cool. I, I really like it. I like walking into some sort of environment that looks completely like destroyed and then you can just rewind it back um that part is really interesting to me and there's little clusters of things that you can um like rewind the time back further in certain areas and stuff it's it's really interesting so definitely recommend it i think it was 20 bucks when i got it or 20, 25 dollars yeah it's 25 yeah and uh manvir my friend said that it took him like eight hours to to play so seems like it's worth it he said he didn't like the ending um, but he said he still had a really good time regardless. So definitely recommend that one if, if you're at all interested. It definitely reminded me of um, uh, what it, what is the the Vox voxel shadows game of doubt. You, sh shadows of doubt. It reminded me of a little bit of that insofar as like the the sense of mystery that it's able to instill. Um, but it's de like I said, it's definitely way more bespoke 
uh, mm-hmm. than than that game is. Where that game is like, you know, everything is is generated on the go. Um, this is this is a story. So recommend it. Oh, this looks cool. awesome. I, I for some reason I thought this was <laughs> nobody saves the world, and I was really <laughs> confused because I was like, is that, I was like, is that the VR? <laughs> is that the VR game, or is that a different one? No, it's the one with like the horse legs, and you get the horse legs, and the you can change the front of your body and the back of your body, and oh, you're like the that wizard, one's so good. The, the that one's so good. That yeah. game is really good, and I was like, oh, that's I, think I was so happy Kyle's is, playing it. <laughs> is nobody the new outer? Where every every game oh, has no. nobody in the title. Uh, out nobody what worlds. The, what is it? Nobody um, wilds. Keep talking and nobody dies or whatever. Right? Nobody explodes. That, yeah, I mean, that's nobody serious. explodes. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. There's the movie Nobody with Saul Goodman. M- Mr. Nobody. Did you ever Mr. watch Mr. Nobody that movie? with Jared it's Leto? Awful. It's terrible. I hate uh, oh, you didn't like that one? It's 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 got a cult following. I understand why it's i don't like jared leto i always thought i can appreciate i can appreciate the the artistry that goes into it but i don't like it that's fair it used to be on netflix all the time and i was like oh i'll check this show out someday and then i found out it was jared leto like years later and then you and then you didn't yeah yeah um that's great uh ian you want to go next yeah uh still been playing some fallout new vegas um i recently hit level 19 nice i did vault vault 22 this week which i don't think i ever did when i originally played vault 22 is the spooky plant vault where they accidentally made plant zombies and it's it's terrifying but then halfway through they give you a flamethrower so i ended up just every plant i saw i just torched it because it could potentially be an enemy (laughs) and it was great (laughs) um so yeah i it's it's funny i i i was enjoying that game and I'm like 16 hours in. So I hit a point where I was like, if I wasn't playing this for stream, I would probably not keep playing this because I've already beaten the game once and I'm kind of tired of it. Mm-hmm. But I'm still playing it because I'm going to beat it for the stream. Uh, I've got the DLC and and the the rest of the main story to go through. And in my head, I'm like, OK, I want to get through the stream series. Let's just do the main quest. And then I start the stream and I'm like, OK, let's do the main quest. Let me look at my list of quests. Oh, Oh, I got to go turn this in real quick. Let me go to McCarran Airport. And then I'm like, oh, what do you mean there's a mystery going on at the control tower? And I just keep getting sidetracked because the side quests are so good in Fallout New Vegas, the locations, the characters. And so I'm I'm I have an intention to mainline this game and the DLC to just get through the stream series. But in reality, I keep getting sidetracked everywhere. And then I've got uh, great people in the chat like Kalucha and, and have Kiri who were like, hey, you should do Vault 22. And I'm like, OK, all right, we'll do that next. And I do that <laughs> and have a good time. So I'm still really enjoying it. I had a very tough combat session this last game. Will, do you remember the Fiend territory, which is just west of West Side? which is on the western side of like New Vegas. Uh, and it's like it's like a bunch of ruined buildings and there's a bunch yes, of bad yes, guys yes. in it. And there's that the like specific enemies, there's some named enemies there. I don't think yeah, I've there's a couple there named that. enemies. Yeah. Yeah. And I so anyways, I stumbled into that area and I was like, "Oh, let's start fighting here." And it's basically like there's an outside portion that has like 10 enemies that if you're not careful, you'll just aggro all of them at once. And then you go into an inside section, which is like inside a walled off section. It's still outside, but it's a walled off ruins section. And there's like 10 bad guys there. And that one's tricky because you come in through. I don't know if there were other doors, but the door I came in through, you end up in a ruined building and then you poke your head out the doorway and you just aggro like 10 people. (laughs) And I was like, I was like out of aid. I was like half out of ammo. My health is at like 50 percent and I had to I had to reload it like four or five times. But eventually I, I was able to like figure out the combat puzzle by being like, OK, I'm going to use these guns at a distance. I'm going to lure them into this doorway and then I'm going to step back and I'm going to like crowd control with this. Like there was literally like four or five guys coming through the doorway at once, like 10 feet in front of me. Um, so it was getting pretty hairy. But most of the last stream was just like diving into the combat really heavily and and mm-hmm. playing around with that. Um and, and and I think that's one of the strong suits of Fallout New Vegas is that the combat, it's not that the combat is good because I'm not sure I would call it good. It's just that it has certain parts of it that feel good. Certain guns feel good. Certain combat actions feel good. 
Uh, it has the cinematic element. So like I, I really like to take shots at people from far away and like you, 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 you line up that beat and they're like a hundred yards away and you're just like, OK, I think I got it. <laughs> and you do click and then it goes boom, critical. And it like does the cinematic zoom in and their head pops and all that. So it has these little touches that make the combat entertaining and fun, um, even if some of the weapons are shit. And even if it does feel a little wonky, um, I, I will say I still fucking hate all economies in all Bethesda games because I every every it feels like you are perpetually poor like e <laughs> even when you like that whole fucking place that I just I, I just killed like 30 guys at that place right and I looted all their armor all their weapons like combined their weapons together combine their armor together so I was like having like perfect uh perfect repair armor and stuff like that and i go and sell it and i get like 500 caps for it i'm like what the fuck do you mean 500 caps i looked at it on the ground and it was like 200 caps now it's worth 20 and i'm at the store selling something for 500 caps and you're selling stuff for 15,000 caps how the fuck am i ever supposed to get that much money like it just feels like there is zero progression in What's Bethesda your economy at? games Oh, I'm an idiot. So my barter's at like 25. <laughs> well, that's probably why. But what is it? What, I thought, what is it? I, I barter thought barter increases was just conversation. Like, no, no. Barter is how much you make at, and how much cheaper stuff is at stores and how much more you sell things at that's stores. That's fucked. See, I don't, I don't like that because in my head, like the prices should be the, the same for everybody. It, like barter should bartering. come into conversation. Yeah, that's <laughs> dumb. Yeah. I I when I first started that game, I think it was Halucha told me like some of the mods that I should download. And I kept seeing mods about rebalancing the economy. And uh -huh. I ran into the exact same thing you're talking about where it, I don't remember it so much within Skyrim, but I do remember uh -huh. it within like Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 definitely were like this feels really slated against like the player and not in a fun way. Um, and I think yeah. I actually did download one of those mods and it just makes things a little bit easier, a little bit more like palatable when you're buying stuff. Um, and you can, you know, you can still utilize barter and stuff like that, uh -huh. but it it's not quite as daunting as like just seeing some of the ridiculous prices that come up in that game. Yeah. I, I guarantee yeah, if I so loaded up my new Vegas save, I would probably have over like, 30,000 caps. I, 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 I'm like, I, my, my big thing with that is anytime I buy things at a store, I am always selling back to or above other stuff. What I, yeah, yeah. what I got. I, I mean, I'm doing that too. I'm at like five or 6,000, but the thing that I'm working towards is they have one of the, I forget what they call them, but it's just a little module that lets you regen health passively. And oh. when I discovered that, I was like, I was like, oh, I really want that. So I'm trying to work towards that, but that's 10,000 caps. So I'm like, I'm earning it very slowly. You don't want to see if you can glitch and find where the like, uh, the, the box is that has all the inventory for it. It's probably under the map. No. But I always love that. That's what they do in yeah. the rest of the game. Cause you're always like, I just want to rob the guy and steal everything, but they never have it on them. Cause they yeah. suck. But anyways, yeah, that's, that's back to new Vegas. I'm 16 hours in. I think I'm on like episode 11 or 12. That's every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, probably about halfway through. I'm excited to, to do some more of the DLCs coming up. Cool. Uh, the other game I've been playing, VTOL VR. Look, I promise I have a reason for talking about this game yet again, even <laughs> though I only played it for 30 minutes this week. And it's because uh, VTOL VR, if you're not familiar with it, is the greatest VR game ever made. We're familiar. It's basically, it's like a perfect, it's a military flight sim you're playing Top Gun, you're in various different fighter jets, but it's the perfect balance between arcade because you can hop in and grab the sticks and just rip it and mill sim because you actually do have to learn like radar systems a little bit and how to lock targets. It's not super arcadey like Ace Combat and it's fantastic. Uh, I have 90 hours in this game and they recently released an update that has just blown me away with how much it has changed the game. Uh... And I'll describe kind of the three changes they made in like in order from like least to, to biggest. Uh, that's right. I said least to biggest. Uh, <laughs> it's a scale. <laughs> it makes sense somehow. Um, so they added they before there was a very rudimentary radio radio system. So you had like a radio with your team and a radio with everybody. 
and then you could get like AI radio. But now they actually have radio channels, so you can do multiple radio channels. And they have ILS, which I believe stands for Instrument Landing System. So the idea is if I call the tower and I'm like, hey, I want to land on your runway. And they're like, sure, come on in at runway 27. Uh, they'll also tell me the radio code that I need to put in to then get the radio signal that tells me the the, glide, the approach path and the glide slope. So it adds like a little like there's a little keypad and you have to you have to dial that in. You can do buddy lasing, which means somebody else could be pointing a laser at the target and you can dial in your missiles to use their laser code and then fire your missile elsewhere and it'll track using their like top gun maverick <laughs> yeah exactly yeah because before it was like i laze i shoot but now it's like hey you laze the target because you can see it and i'll fire the missile over here but you mm -hmm. gotta punch in the keypad uh the other thing they added is they added time of day changes so before you could just be like oh i want this mission to be at noon and that was it but now the time is dynamically changing as the mission is going on um i guess when you create the mission whatever you can set that but basically you know the mission can start at noon and it can keep going and end up being nighttime or whatever the big thing they added holy shit folks they added weather and i know that doesn't sound like a lot <laughs> but basically the game before this was it is always it's either cloudy as in like overcast but there's no clouds it's basically either gray skies or blue skies that's what it was before so it was like pick your single time of day and it's gray skies or blue skies they added weather and i loaded into a mission and i was in a hangar in my jet and it was sunset the sun was setting and it was cloudy and i was like holy fuck am i playing the same game like it looks drastically different because before that it looked like a vr game like you know vr games they have to look very simplistic either because uh it's it's not a big dev studio or they're trying to run on built-in hardware so it, it's very simplistic looking like simple textures uh you know not a lot of stuff and so it looked like that before and it was probably one of the downsides of the game but you forgave it because the gameplay was so good but now i load in and i'm like holy shit look at the look at the sun setting and it's doing like a red haze over everything and i can see the clouds moving i'm like holy shit so i load in this mission and it's one of my favorite multiplayer missions there was uh 15 people on the server including myself and it was a pvpve map and basically the way it is, is there's a big mountain range down the center of the map. One team spawns on one side, one team spawns on the other. And um, you're flying towards the center of the map and you're just trying. It's like team deathmatch. You're just trying to get kills. But then there's also NPC planes flying around. And then there's NPC ground troops and NPC tanks and NPC like SAM units in the mountain range. And there's NPC infantry with man pads, man portable air defense. So you got to be careful, right? I've played this mission before. It's really fun because like literally like you have this big mountain range and the enemies on the other side and sometimes you see them on your radar. So you can like you can go up high and try and shoot them down or you can try and sneak into their lines through the valleys. And it's like real fucking cool. Right. I load into this first time in weather and I, I take off and I realize the clouds are really fucking low. The clouds are like 2000 feet off the ground so I can see the base of the mountain range in the distance. Damn. And I'm like. I'm like, I, I can't see much. And so I pop up in the clouds and then I pop through it and it's sunny as fuck above the clouds. Right. <laughs> like, I know this is common sense, but the way that it just like <laughs> it fucking works and it, it looks it was like so impressive to me how much it was. It was it, it made me feel I pop through the clouds. Right. And I can see I can see the cloud layer. I can see the top of the mountain peeking through the clouds. And I just see a fuckload of enemy planes and missiles and friendly planes <laughs> like they're all like 20 miles away. But they're like blips and they're all just like arcing fucking missiles at each other. And I'm seeing missile trails and I'm just like, I don't want to be up there. That seems like a bad time. So I go back back down in the cloud layer. And I'm hugging, I'm hugging just under the clouds, like 2000 feet off the deck. And the closer I get to the mountain range, the clouds stay at the same altitude and the ground keeps getting higher and higher. And before I fucking know it, I'm in the fucking clouds 
flying in between these mountain ranges. And the only way I know I'm in the mountain ranges is because if I look down, there are trees 10 feet below me oh my and God. I'm looking at the map and the map is telling me where the walls of the valley are because I can't fucking see. Like I'm like in a cl and I'm just like literally like, okay, okay. And I'm having to like, like manually like feel out the walls of this valley where I like get close enough, just close enough to see it and then pull around it. And then it's it's so cool because I'm I'm getting enemy unit locations from my teammates radar so I can I can lock that target on my radar like a ground unit and I can slew my targeting pod to it. But because of the weather. I can't I can't tell where they actually are like I can tell they're 10 miles away that way. I can tell they're right fucking there, but I can't see them because of the cloud. And I also don't know if if they're on the other side of a mountain or if I fired my missile, it actually would hit them right now and just through the cloud. So mm -hmm. it just like it has drastically changed the game. And the whole time the sun is setting. So eventually it becomes pitch fucking black in the clouds. I got to turn my night vision on and I can't fucking see. And at some point, like I, I popped above the clouds and somebody immediately locked me with a missile and fired at me and I tried to evade them. And I don't know if they shot me down with the missile or if I hit a mountain because I didn't see the fucking mountain. But it's just <laughs> It's wild to me. Again, this game's like five or six years old. I've got 90 hours into it and they push one minor content update and it has drastically fucking changed the game. It's wild. It's such a cool fucking game. What um, what weather is there? Is there like rainy thunderstorm? I think there's there's rain. There's clouds. I know there's definitely wind so you can ratchet up the wind and really have you Ooh. throw you around. I think that's mostly it i want to say um it, it's it's funny because i had to i had to try a couple different multiplayer servers because they're all running multiplayer maps made by the community and most of them did not have weather turned on yet mm. so I, I think we'll just have to see over time as people start to experiment more with the weather and how, how they can set it in the missions what it will really look like but right now it's just it's just fucking wild how much has changed the game time for me to set up my vr again play some <laughs> hell yeah some vtol that's great. Um, video games I have been playing, folks. There, um, folks. People, folks, folks, folks. People say don't do drugs. I say you're. You just got to do the right type of drug. Factorio is one of the best drugs. It is uncut. <laughs> yeah. It is delicious. Uh, it is so good. Uh, and I've been playing Factorio uh, mostly because. Um, I wanted to play it and I was I was that factorial hype video that we talked about last week It's just so fucking good and <clears throat> Every time I play factorio I get to oil and I get scared and I don't want to play anymore And I was watching some tutorial videos and they're like every time people get to oil they stop playing and I'm like I'm fucking Keeping the play of the game So I've been <laughs> playing the game I've been I've been doing pretty well. I just set up plastic production uh, I've set up a couple okay. train stations. I had to go get coal from a new place. Um, I've scoped out a couple new places where I'm going to set up trains for like bringing in uh, iron and uh, all that sort of stuff. I might do an offshore, not offshore, but like offsite steel production at one of those. Uh, coming up with all that, figuring out trains. And I watched like a good YouTube short on like trains explained in under three minutes and it's like stations and then this is what signals do this is why they're important they let trains your trains will never hit each other if you have signals because it says if there's a train in the next segment or not and then there's the yep. other signals that look two spaces ahead uh and that's kind of how you operate like trains almost hitting each other and, and being that close and everything so um i have trains all set up at their stations i have yet to have them move so uh i need to figure all that out also i loaded up i set up a sulf i i don't know if sulfur picks up again for some reason i remembered sulfur being big so i built like a big station for it and loaded up the train and now the train's just sitting there because i haven't brought it anywhere yet because i don't need sulfur for anything yet i think it's for military science so maybe i don't I, i'm on a passive server or a passive game because i just don't want to deal with the bugs um yeah 
And so uh, I haven't been uh, messing with that at all. But it's fun. It's great. Um, there is a bit of a lull between, like, in coming up with green science and then doing oil. It's just a lot of, like, maintenance while running green research. Like, you're not even paying attention to what you're researching because you're just like, oh, I always need to be researching something while I'm working on things. Um, yeah. So now I'm at the point <laughs> where it's kind of balanced out a little bit better. Uh, and I am uh, I'm having fun. It's a great game. I love Factorio. Part of me was like, what if I just bring my laptop and play Factorio on the flight um, or my Steam Deck? Because it runs pretty great on there. But I, I still I need mouse and keyboard for that game. I've tried with the Steam Deck a little bit and it's serviceable, but I just like I feel like I'm not optimized. It's a lot of placing. Well. Yeah, and, yeah. And they are pretty good with the controls on that. But I just like eh, I want a key. I'm not bringing my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse on the flight. Um, yeah. So are you are you going to beat Vanilla Factorio. Yeah, I want to try to beat Vanilla Factorio before the Space Age comes out in October. Yeah. And and the other thing I I always do with Factorio is like I need to keep going and I feel like I have to push that aside like I don't need to keep going. I need to move forward while patching up behind me and like making sure things are running smoothly and like transfer things. Yeah. Like and I don't have to get crazy about like oh I've unlocked red belts. Everything has to be red belts now. Like I, I have plenty mm -hmm. of like yellow belts and yellow uh inserters. It's like if I can build everything to the yellow speed, then when I start upgrading and getting more materials, I can upgrade to the red speed and and, mm -hmm. and start doing a lot better. So if if I may uh call out your bullshit real quick. Yeah. Um because we played we played several of these factory type games together now. Sure. And you you do something that I used to do, but that I have learned is bad, which is you will kind of just do whatever you would need now as quickly and easily as possible, even if it's ugly and it's not properly balanced and it barely works. And then you'll move on to the next thing. And that's going to bite you in the ass at some point. So my 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 recommendation to you is. When you're building something and you're trying to like balance it or set it up or properly slow down and try and do it at least partially organized, etc. Because if it's messy or barely working, it's just going to get worse later in the game when you have yeah. to lean on it and expand it and stuff like that. I think I, I, I have that problem a lot more with Satisfactory than I do with Factorio because Factorio, I have an easy way. Of, it, well, yeah, it's 2D. Yeah. And I have a much easier yeah. way of being like, here's my factory it is this not it's this amount of items blocked out i can come back to this factory yep. and add a complete another row to it and just increase the output of this place so yeah. like i'm a little bit yeah. better I, I still do what you're talking about is i just like down and dirty but that's also the thing i'm trying to get away from like i was i realized my oil production was super low and i'm like okay i'm gonna spend some time getting proper oil production yeah. up and going over abundance of oil producers and then yeah. uh, getting that stuff ready. So I, 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 I have been using up. the calculator Not, a little bit, but yeah. Honestly, I, the calculators, for some reason, like the UI UX of all those calculators, they just yeah, they don't suck. mesh with me. Um, I, and I'm doing that not just to shit on you, which I do enjoy, but because I do want to see you finally finish Factorio because there's a lot of really cool late game tech. And especially since we're going to play the space expansion together with Zach. So yeah. I I want I I'm I'm giving you this advice again not just to shit on you but <laughs> to kind of make it easier for you to finish the base game. Yeah. So I I'm I'm going to stick with it. Uh I am at least going to try to play every uh, uh once a week. Uh I've unfortunately actually been busy Did you making say once. Uh, no. Did you say once a week. I I meant like because I've been busy I'm trying to make sure I play once a week buddy that's your like, fucking job now <laughs> like like you're not playing Factorio if you're not playing at least like five to ten hours per day and that is not a joke oh I'm playing like, a lot of hour I just I, listen I'm gonna you probably least... need I think I think 60 plus hours is what you need to finish yeah I think I'm 10 hours into this save I don't know I'm gonna maybe, get yeah done. you know maybe maybe that's too much I know my Dyson Sphere save was 80 but I, I, you know, honestly, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe 30 or 40. Yeah. Sometimes I but want a Factorio like, game like, where it's that's like, like two sittings, though. You know, that's two, that's two Factorio sittings. I want a factory type game where, like, when I tech level up, 
like we talked about this in Satisfactory, like when I have conquered iron plates and and all that sort of stuff, I want it to be like, okay, here's your building that just makes iron plates. Like I want yeah. the war or like, hey, the ore out of the ground now, it doesn't give you ore, it gives you just gives you iron plates. Like I want Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that's better than Factorio Satisfactory, but that's my like idea of like the like mobile quick like the Balatro yes. Factorio game is like you're yeah, leveling well, up. Once- all that sort yeah, of stuff. once you've conquered a tech level, you should no longer have to get into the detailed nitty gritty of building in that tech layer. It should exactly. give you shortcuts to then. And it to does to some extent, like the next one, like I've, I've gotten to like electric, like electric furnaces and stuff like that. So it does give you a yeah. little bit of that. Um, so, yeah, in fact, is fun. I'm enjoying it. Um, another game I've been enjoying uh is uh I, I, in the long tradition of the past three weeks of starting a video game and beating a video game before what are you so overwatch uh onimushi <laughs> onimusha warlords uh, is a video game <laughs> i knew you were gonna think it was overwatch uh onimusha warlords is a game i have uh started and beaten this week Running in at a cool three hours and 37 minutes, this game, which has incredible reviews, very well reviewed. Uh, It is uh, essentially Resident Evil 1 style, uh, Resident Evil 1 remake style, uh, where it's 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 not as shitty looking as original Resident Evil 1, but it is that style of of uh, uh, fixed camera sort of thing. It takes place in feudal Japan. You're a samurai. Uh, you've come to this castle uh, to save your princess, uh, and uh, this castle is just a Resident Evil manor in feudal Japan. Uh, it's got a pretty cool combat system, and by pretty cool, I mean generic, uh, where you are just like guarding, uh, you can lock on, uh, and then you're using the stick and the X button to like do your moves like if you push it in the right direction towards the enemy he'll do a stab if you push it away he'll do like a kick um that being said i didn't engage with it very much because this game's really easy uh especially on whatever difficulty <laughs> i was playing on i killed every I, I boss in one hit um, i love when games are like yo you could do some complicated shit if you want but uh, or you could just mash it and it's you'll like, be good brah and you can get away like I think the difficulty, I was hoping the difficulty of this game would make me engage with it in the same way the difficulty of Ninja Gaiden made me engage with the combat system of Ninja Gaiden to some extent. Uh, I'm not that good at Ninja Gaiden, but I feel like I'm better than the average person at that that Xbox uh, game. Um, And so it's fun. It's got that Resident Evil element to it. You're just going around collecting stuff. There's a secondary character you play as sometimes. Uh, and everything kind of interlinks back up to each other well the the puzzles are designed cool uh the the like objects and stuff you pick up the enemies are neat they're like all these undead warriors uh there's also like these dead samurai everywhere and you're like why are all these dead bodies like other than part of the environment uh and then you get like a a necklace that lets you talk to dead people and then you can just talk to all these like ghosts which is pretty neat all the backgrounds are like pre-rendered uh, shots again fixed camera perspectives when you're going into rooms it does this thing where if you're whole if you're running in a direction uh, and you cross to the next camera it'll keep you running in the direction you're going but if the camera has changed perspectives as soon as you go like as lo- like if i'm holding down to leave this room going down and then the camera changes and i'm walking away from the camera as long as i keep holding down i'm still walking in the direction i was originally committed to but as soon as i change uh-huh. and it reorients to the new room so like sometimes when you're just like when the camera's cutting really quickly you're just changing the stick and you just double back really fast between the two shots and you're just like wait where am i uh and it's kind of annoying so i had to like learn to just hold the stick down and like go through into the room um but yeah it it was a fun quick game it's very campy uh it's in in weird uh if it i wish it was longer but also three hours and 30 minutes uh you know in out it was fun it was cool it was it was it was neat uh and it was on xbox so uh 
It's like $7.99 or something like that. So play it if you want to. There's other games. I don't think any of the other games have ever come to modern systems. So I believe there's a two and a three. So I need to... Uh, what, what did the first one originally come out on? On the Xbox and PlayStation 2. And then it okay, had gotcha. a... Then it had like a, a re-release called... It is not Geronimo Warlords, but it's a word that starts with a G. Geronimo. So I, I just don't remember what it is. I'm just making German. up a word. Uh, it's German Warlords, uh, <laughs> and that changed some stuff to it. And then the Xbox One version is just an upres of the original uh, that didn't really change things. Uh, yeah, so that's fun. Go check it out. Highly recommend. Gave it a seven. Uh, I have also been playing No Man's Sky, the hit video game No Man's Sky. I said I saw this. You know what happened? I saw a trailer. Saw a trailer for No Man's Sky. And I was like, damn, No Man's Sky's looking fucking hot. Uh, it's looking so good. And then, of course, I'm playing on the Xbox, and I'm like, you know, I'll just start over. I don't have the right saves. So it's like, let's do oh, this. Oh, no, buddy. Well, I have to because I don't remember a fucking thing about this game. Um, yeah, but you remember how bad that start of that game still you know, is? It's still bad. It's a lot better even than when we all last played No Man's Sky. And it does let you but pick Destiny. and choose. Um, it's <laughs> yeah, it's a lot better. Um, but still, I was like, I'm like 10 hours maybe I played. And I'm still like, Oof. I just don't want to play this game anymore. And I keep getting YouTube videos and recommendations because I watched one stupid video of like, this is the No Man's Sky, and like, do this, do this and that. And I was like, yeah, I wish the fucking game told me this. Like, what do you mean, yeah. do this, do that? Like, it's just like, yeah. that game looks so awesome and so cool, but it's so bad at at things that it yeah. just makes me not want to get to that next stuff. Like, there's so many cool things in that game, and if I was at that point in that game, I'd be having so much fun. I'd be having so much you know, fun. You know, you say that, you say that. But remember when we we did four or five episodes of the Sandbox series where we played No Man's Sky together and still the conclusion, the conclusion of that was I wanted a mech. They'd added mechs. I wanted a mech. We spent time building the base. We spent time getting all the fucking resources. We get the mech. I get in the mech and I immediately realized this mech controls like shit. <laughs> like that's that's the problem with No Man's Sky is they. They have tried so hard to fix this game and there are some things they have fixed, but their idea of fixing this game is adding content, but you've, you've hit the nail on the head. The problem is no longer content. The problem is how do you, how do you onboard the player onto that content? How do you railroad them content to content and how do you satisfy them with that content? Yeah. And they've never delivered on any of that. And I just want to be like, I want to say like, Hey, I want to start as a trader spawn me as a trader that's all i want to do i never want to go to a planet and mine things ever yeah i never want to do that ever that's, and that's there's ways idea. to do that there's like i was watching a, an actual good youtube video on it where he's like hey you you're like pretty early on in no man's sky you can just start buying things and at space stations buying things from traders and you really don't ever need to go to a planet surface ever and I was like, okay, that's cool. I wish I was doing that right now. because, And I wish the yeah. game was like, that's a way you... I wish there were tutorials for the ways you want to play this game. And it wasn't I, like... They need, I mean, they need like a job system. Yeah, you know? exactly. I, I, get, I get the complaints, and I agree with you. It, it is not a game for me. I, I find very little of interest to do in that game. But I do think that there is an audience for that game that is clearly very satisfied with what they have. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily like how everyone should think about it, but like it's been going for a good long while. I know we all know Jake really likes it. Um, <laughs> and he's, you know, he's he's a very particular type of gamer. Um, but the people that love it clearly love it. So I think they're making a game for that person. And that person is not the majority of people. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I the last time we played it, like all four of us together, I just remember being like, there was an overwhelming sense of of you can do anything, but there's nothing to do like yeah. that's that, that if I had yeah. to like boil it down to that, it was that was my experience. And it just, you know, it wasn't very fun to play, like even just movement was not very satisfying. So I am not the, the audience for that at all. And I don't think any of us here are. 
but like Jake is the odd man out and he loves it. So if they're getting, you know, one of every four gamers, that's who they're making that game for. So, yeah, you know, more power think, to them. I think my problem is it is in snapshots. It is so much the game I want to play that yeah. in sitting down to play it. It's like it's like when the a trailer for a movie is better than the actual movie. It's just like I, yeah. I, I so yeah. desperately want it to be good. And it's just I don't it's just not worth the time investment for me. So I'm not gonna play any more of it, but it, it's nice to go back and remember why you hate things. Um <laughs> speaking of hating things, no not really. Deep Rock Galactic, uh Karen and I played a little bit, because uh, the new season dropped last month, I think. Um and just wanted to check it out. And you know, it's fun, it's cool. I like all the stuff they're doing in Deep Rock Galactic. It's a fantastic video game, but I think it's time to make Deep Rock Galactic 2. Uh, it just, we played a couple missions and it was a very different mission. Uh, I, I genuinely thought it was cool. Like you're exploring the cave system and then they drop a like new drill platform. And then that drill platform digs down like 2000 feet while you're riding it into like a hole. Oh, that's awesome. And you're like shooting stuff coming down and then you break into this like geode, you collect all the stuff and then it gives you rocket boots to fly all the way back up uh out of the hole which is really neat and cool and i thought that was well added and stuff uh but then the next mission it was one of those aquark aquark missions where you're just the platform you walk around you dig the stuff out you throw them back and put them in it's just like i i i like this game i i love everything about deep rock i realized i have like 130 hours in it which is crazy um and i'm i'm just saying to myself like i just i want something new from them I still want Deep Rock. I, I would be fine with a Deep Rock too, but it just like it feels so satisfied. This game, like it's so complete and well made, and, and and a lot of entertainment. And I'm just like, I want, I want your your second thing. I want, I want like, oh, we're on the Elven world now, or something like that. You know, like it's not, it's like a sequel. It's like, and and, and not in the sense of Survivor, because Survivor's cool and neat. But something, uh, something in that deep rock vein. Um, so, I, I, they are. I think they are pretty successful. So I'm hoping, hoping that happens soon. Um, Hearing anything them. about Deep Rock Galactic just makes me think of Rock Raiders, and rock I just Raiders. want to go back and play Lego Rock Raiders really badly. <laughs> oh, I remember always wanting Lego Rock Raiders, and I never played it. And I always saw it in magazines. Oh. It was great until we got to that one level that was like so ridiculously impossible that I could never get past it. But I, maybe I should stream that. Ooh. That would be kind of fun. You could, oh. we could, you could call it the Rock Iraq Raiders, and you dress up as army erect erect raiders <laughs> or erect raiders, <laughs> and you just blur your. Uh, you have to take a blue raiders. chew beforehand, and you have to see. You can only play for as long as the boner lasts. Should I name my character like Osama or something? Like what? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Osama bin Blue Chew. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Jesus Christ. Uh, that's it for me. Those are the games I've been playing this week. Uh, if you would like to play games this week, uh, call in at one two four seven three. Eight nine six five. Remember, we're gonna have a call in line at one point. <laughs> uh, you can call in. We just don't have the phone. We, we took a call one time. <laughs> we did take oh, we, a call. Oh, we actually did it. Oh, wow, I forgot. We should bring that back. Yeah, that's Let's a good for bit. extra life. That is. Oh, that is we should game. do it for extra life. There was actually um, I forget what game they played, but we could probably adapt it to any other game. Uh, I think it was a Wubby stream. They had. It was like this. Uh, 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 uh what's it called Ru- not ruse game but like you were playing a character almost like secret hitler sort of thing but every round they would have one character go to another room and they had your phone in and they would they would talk to chat like they're on a phone call with them being like okay this is what's going on i think this fucking guy's g- got this and he's doing it yeah. and it was just like well produced like that and i was like oh that's such a good bit nice. of like going picking up the phone and and talking to chat so yeah we should do something uh in extra life um news 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 ian gibson tell me Hi. the news yeah nothing but good news this week folks it's time for another visit to the layoffs liminal zone 
We've got three big uh, layoff stories this week. First up, uh, sim racing powerhouse Fanatec, who has made a lot of, uh, I would call them middle budget uh, racing wheels and racing pedals, has slipped into bankruptcy. They have not officially laid off people, but it's likely coming. Intel has also laid off 15,000 employees announced today uh, and will stop non-essential work. Uh, I forget what that number was. I I think it was like 17% of their workforce or something like that. Damn. Uh, And then uh, Bungie has laid off 220 developers. Um, They also are... They've uh, haven't canceled. I, I think they said they canceled a project and then they've moved a project over to uh, SIE Sony Interactive Entertainment and we'll have a new studio under SIE handle that. It won't be bungee. Um, just uh, bad layoff news this week. That brings the total of games industry layoffs this year to eleven thousand four hundred so far. Um, I don't even know how to transition. What do we what do we even say to this shit? Welcome. Yeah, um, the people, and not the people who got laid which off. Which ones? <laughs> which ones? Get a job, hippie. No, but uh, it's just like, uh, especially like in some of these cases, like I've seen a couple smaller studios who have had to cut jobs with way more compassionate explanations about certain things and and line items and being like, this yeah. is what we have to do. This is what we did. Versus Bungie, where the CEO has been buying millions of dollars worth of cars for the past year, and 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 showing them off, and at showing work them off two days before the layoffs. And yeah. listen, ugh. yeah, it's just, ugh, it's it's gross, and 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 you feel like you feel like you don't have a problem with CEOs until you see the problem with certain CEOs and you're just like, what the fuck? Like what? Like, or, or it is just tangentially related, but why is Robert Downey Jr. getting like a hundred, five hundred million dollars to be Dr. Doom? Like more than that. the budget of Oppenheimer, which he won an Oscar. Well, for. Yeah. Like, like, because we're talking about it. That's why. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But it's just like that. Unfortunately, that one does make sense. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but it's yeah. just it's it, the amount of money being thrown around when sh- stuff like this is happening is just kind of gross. Uh, especially when there was a gigantic fucking uh strike last year and the year uh, year before last year, right? Last year. Uh, anyways, the writer strike. And them saying we don't have enough money oh. to pay writers, we don't have enough money to pay people and, and voice actors and actors and blah blah blah. And it's like, oh no, we're just gonna do all this. Yeah. As the, soon the, as I as soon as I get a job, I'm switching sides and I'm gonna start saying it's it's not rich people who are out of touch, it's poor people. They need to get <laughs> they need to get on the boat. But Bungie's such a weird case for me though, because <laughs> uh, we talked about this before. Bungie has had an axe over its head for years now because they were not delivering on. uh, I would say they didn't they didn't deliver Destiny 1, Destiny 2. They had some successes, but it was mostly failures. And yet they kept fucking expanding. They kept getting bigger and bigger and talking about new projects they were starting. And it's it's interesting reading some of the, the people who were laid off and the people who weren't laid off at Bungie talking about how they they knew they didn't actually know but they knew the inside joke was like we're working our asses off and it's not going to matter because we're going to be fired by the end of the year anyways like we're all going to get laid off at some point anyways like everybody fucking knew Bungie was in a bad spot because they weren't delivering and they were over hiring and th- this is not a I was not surprised at fucking all by this layoff Um, it, it's still vicious it's still horribly mismanaged but like we all knew this was coming and and that's that makes it for me even more frustrating because it's like if me as a casual fucking gamer can see this coming how the fuck do the execs not see this coming and start to take corrective actions because of it well the answer is they didn't need to their 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 answer was sell to sony and pocket cash off that right that's all they had to do buy some cars yeah drive away um, yeah, it, um, it would the, be. Uh, sorry, I just want to say there is some breaking news that came out about 45 minutes ago. Uh, Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy were impacted by the bungee layoffs. 
Oh, wow. That's pretty big. Yeah. It's two senior executives at Bungie. Damn. They were the fall guys. <laughs> it's, it is weird seeing execs in a title like that because normally you don't see that. No. Um, um, and, and the uh, rumored Destiny 3 project has been canceled. Apparently it never even started, but now they've pushed that aside and it won't be happening. Should have called it Dest Dest Three. It would have been it would have been better. What do you think Destiny Three would have been like? Probably just as bad as Destiny One and More Two. More the right? same. More <laughs> the same. Hey, um... I can't. T- okay, look. This this is not me tooting my own horn. I did not want this to happen, but we need to go back and look at my prediction on Bungie oh, shutting down here because it is. I you have a clip. I think we're. <laughs> Oh. I don't I don't have the clip, but what did I say within? I think I said it's last on, year it's on stream. Within it's, f- Ian says Bungie gone in five years. <laughs> I have the folder. <laughs> they, will, they will shut called Ian's they will promises. Shut down within five years. Yeah. And it's it's happening very soon. Like they're literally the the Jeff Grubb talks about how essentially the studio is now run by Herman Holst under SIE, that their leadership is just out of power. Yeah. And it's it's happening faster than even naysayers like myself thought it would happen. Uh, it's a shame they do make. OK, look, I'm not going to bullshit at Destiny and Destiny 2 big letdowns, but they do have some fantastic game designers there. They yeah. just never really could put it into a cohesive package. Like, think about Warframe. Warframe is Destiny, but Warframe is huge. It's consistent. They have their own fucking convention and their fan base is super happy. And it's because they they deliver Cons- they consistently deliver new content that's good and satisfies the fan base and pays the bills. And Destiny was never able to do all of those things at the same time. They never could. And a lot of times they were not doing any one of those things. And this is fucking coming. Like the only reason this took this long is because it's Bungie. If it was any other fucking studio, they would have been gone by now. Yeah. They were given so much free reign and so much leash to fuck it up. And they're at the end of it now. So it sucks that they're getting laid off. I really hate that people are impacted here, but they've been fucking it up by the numbers for years. Yeah, I was going to say, um, it feels like and now that you say Warframe, it feels like Warframe and Deep Rock Galactic are the two extremes of success on that. Like Deep Rock Galactic is is pretty small niche puts out great content yep. fans love it they're at least hopefully making money i haven't heard that they aren't yep. pays the making bills. money pays yeah. the bills and then warframe's the complete other side of that and then bungie's just ping-ponging in the middle being like ah, yeah. ah, like screaming like we want to be popular exactly. we want to make money we want to be like it's just it never quite worked out for them and listen maybe you should go back and make uh halo 3 2 like maybe that would be good but it's just like I, I don't mean to hammer on the point, but do you do you guys remember the first press coverage, the first approved press coverage of Destiny when the game hadn't even been named yet? And all they did was they shipped some journalists to their movie theater office and they shuttled them around and they couldn't say much. But they said it has shooting. It has some weird fantasy elements to it, like sci fi. And it it looks like it could be interesting, but we don't really know what it is. and. And the answer is nobody fucking knew what it was, <laughs> not even Bunchy. Like it was just like a weird preview from the start and it just never really materialized in any like concrete successful fashion. I remember that great concept art of the the oh, the bug guys and their tanks mm-hmm. and it was like in the snow and there was a guy real close yeah. to the yeah. The, the frame and he was like looking at him and that i remember seeing that and being like oh, this is gonna be so fucking cool all of and, all of the concept art always looks great yeah like it, and the it, art, their artists and, are amazing again the lore and the art and and the gameplay and everything about destiny is great except for the cohesion of all of that is the is where yeah. where it falls apart it's and the no man's it's sky of shooters yeah yeah <laughs> no it's not that bad but less content yeah it's, it's no it's not as good as no man's sky because no man's sky at least has a shitload of content you know yeah, but i would i would i would play <laughs> i know i agree with you there i agree with you there yeah uh, yeah you do you have to it's way better game i do it's you the playing to. part <laughs> it's we could it's we could have doing. hours of discussion on like they are 
different forms of bad. And then if you had to objectively say which one's better, it's very tough to say, you know. But but somehow which one I'd rather play is much, is way Destiny. easier. <laughs> Immediately Destiny. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jake would even Jake would say that he would hold a gun. To we should head. make I, him play. <laughs> we should make him play a Destiny multiplayer match while playing No Man's Sky. Like switch off at the oh. same time. Oh, that'd be a weird Jake triathlon. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just because those are his games. So we put him. The through third the, one uh, the is the Mixalumia game. He has to get a high score. <laughs> Dude, that would that would be crazy. We should do mini triathlons for, for all of us. Oh God. Ian's oh Vito God. VR land in, in the clouds, land <laughs> a, a thing, and then probably oh. satisfactory or factory or something. Uh... And Mine then, would be like Mirror's Edge yeah. and something Zelda. Assassin's and like, Creed Odyssey. <laughs> no, I've got way Odyssey. too many hours in that game. <laughs> no, <laughs> never again. Oh, oh, boy. Yeah, it'd be a nightmare. Um, great. Thanks for the news, Ian. Uh, you want to hit this content call out? Yeah, this is a fantastic little article by uh, Stephen Totillo. Uh, at game files called playing Pokemon by ear. It's a really nice, like human interest piece uh, talking about Ross Miner, who is a, uh, a gamer. He was blinded in 2006 when he was eight years old. But since then he has been able to play a lot of Pokemon games, even though he's blind. Uh, and, and the way he talks about it is essentially he, there are enough unique sound effects in the game that he can use just the sound of the game to tell, you know, I'm walking on grass. Okay. I just hit a wall. Okay. You know, Pokemon have certain streaks for moves, etc. I know this is the menu beep and, and it's a really cool article talking about different accessibility, not even accessibility options in games, but kind of hidden accessibility, like accessibility isn't just closed captioning or colorblind options in a menu. It's also how you have unintentionally design the game so that it's still accessible to those who have hearing or vision issues or, or, or motor impairments or things like that. So That's highly awesome. recommend checking this article out. It's, um, it's wild to me that somebody could, uh, beat all those Pokemon games just by hearing it and not having somebody with them helping them through it like that's dedication and it also speaks a lot to the pokemon games that they have such like in-depth game design that they have accidentally made the entire world parsable and understandable simply by sound yeah that's i, I was trying to think of what game I was trying to think if i could think of a, a game i could play blind um or, or like has that sort of sound and i i almost thought like minecraft would be pretty good because you at, yeah. at least like I know what grass sounds like. I know what stone like walking on stone sounds like walking in water, um, like chopping things. I know when I'm digging dirt. I know when I'm hitting wood, you know, like like oh, I'm trying to think of yeah. games with good sound design that you can differentiate some yeah. of stuff. I think I think I could probably do a racing game as long as the track is one that I already knew before I went blind. Like I could probably do a decent job of driving Spa Frankershop blind right now because i did the 24 hour race and all the practice for mm. that like i have that track memorized already do you think you could do like flight simulator like, i mean yeah with, but that's uh, that's easy though because once you're in the air it's just like you could well i'm just you know, i'm just thinking of i'm just thinking of stuff that's possible like yeah like if you are if, a blind gamer like would flight simulator yeah. be a game it's like hey i can at least do some stuff yeah if they if they had accessibility to be like you know hit a button it tells you your altitude etc it's at that point it's basically the same as um flying in a cloud like instrument flying where all you, you don't see anything you can't tell you can't even tell what's up or down you're just flying off your instruments if they had a way to tell you the instrument readouts yeah you could totally do it mm. yeah that's cool I, i'm gonna read that later uh yeah, I am. Um, folks, that's going to be it for the show. I'm going to hit the go, go, bye, bye button, and then we're going to get out of here. Okay, thanks. Cool. Bye. Folks, uh, that was the show. I'm going to hit the goodbye, bye, bye button, and we're going to get out of here. Uh, Kyle Bailey was here. Thank you so much for being here. I'm glad we fixed all the computer issues and that nothing will ever plague you ever again, and you're perfect, and we love you. Um, Thank you. 
Of course. Also joining us this week was the wonderful Ian Gibson, first time caller, first time listener. Um, I hate you and I don't care about you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. Die in Italy. <laughs> die in Italy. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you die. Um, yeah. Uh, no, you're great and you're beautiful. Um, we will be back uh, tomorrow, right? 5 p.m. Eastern with some uh, New Vegas. Yes. Follow New Vegas. Back. Back to New Vegas. Back to yes. New Vegas will be Ian tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, this weekend, Pokemon Tournament Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern on Save Data's channel, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, and then next week, I'll be away. Bye, everyone. Bye.